Oh my God. Hang on. How am I going to get this? Oh God. Hang on. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, no. Oh my God, hello everyone. So under that rock, I just spotted one of the most incredible, most fascinating animals in the whole of the UK. I don't think I'm even exaggerating there actually. And whilst trying to get a hold of it, I've been chasing it down this brook. I'm in Lee Woods National Nature Reserve at the moment, just outside of Bristol, a real wildlife haven. And I must admit, this is the first specimen of this animal that I've ever, ever seen. It's always been on my bucket list. Now, after trying to chase it down this book and trying to pick it up, I've realized that that's very, very difficult. It's extremely slippery. It's very difficult to get hold of. And I didn't think I'd see it again, but I've just spotted it underneath some vegetation there. So I'm just going to put the camera in there. So hopefully you can have a look at it as well. It's not going to be the greatest shot in the world. If I just zoom in there. Right, okay. So that thing in the centre of your screen, if I just follow it along, you can see a little ribbon there. Well, that isn't just a piece of leaf. That is the European eel. There it is, believe me now. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. As well as being an incredibly weird creature, has an incredibly fascinating biology as well. It's what we call a migratory fish. So it doesn't just stay in the same place for all its life. In fact, it takes one of the most impressive animal migrations, not just in the fish world, but in the whole of the animal kingdom. Here it is in this little brook now. But actually, this eel was not born in this little brook. This eel, oh, no, I thought I saw it move there. This eel was born in the Sargasso Sea. That's where the European eel migrates to lay its eggs which is right in the middle of the Atlantic. And also, when you think about it, they've got to be adapted to two completely different environments as well, because when they migrate out to the Sargasso Sea, that's salt water, and what we're now in is, of course, fresh water. So their bodies, their physiology has to change to adapt to those completely different environments. And that's not just to do with the salinity of the water as well. The eel is able to change the photoreceptors in its eyes to able to cope with the differing light environments in fresh water and in salt water. How amazing is that? They're adapting to their different sensory ecologies. But honestly, I could not resist. This is probably going to look like the most amateurish video ever now, but I'm just, honestly, I was so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to show you that I did have difficulty picking it up. Here it goes. <laughs> God. They are ridiculous. <laughs> there he goes, look at him. As I say, I was always trying to pick it up earlier. The skin was so smooth and slimy. That is clearly quite an obvious adaptation, not just for escaping um, prey and naturalists, but also it probably helps it in its locomotion as well, makes it more hydrodynamic in the water. Seriously, what an animal. <laughs> That's a big tick for me, I'll tell you that. <laughs>